Hi, in this uh, video we're going to talk about using the Visual Studio Code debugging tools to debug Node. And you can go and find this, um, this link, Debugging uh, Visual Studio Code, and read through it. It describes a, a setup using a launch file, and we're not going to be using that here for Node because Node comes with its own sort of built-in debugging, and we can kind of combine Visual Studio Code and, <clears throat> and Node's debugging to, um, this is some recent changes in VS Code, to uh, be able to make debugging easier. <clears throat> so if you go to this document debug markdown and, and look at this, it tells you that uh, you start by, so we're going to actually be able to attach to the, the program, the running program, by doing a setting <clears throat> which you can find if you go in, I'm on a Mac, but I think it's under settings, um, and then go in here, search for node, and then uh, make sure that this auto attach is on. Okay, so with that set to on, uh, then you can just go to your code, add breakpoints, and when you run on the command line, use this inspect break inspect-brk before the name of the program. So this is an option for Node. Um, and so uh, this all uh, debugging occurs in this debugging view. So we'll be able to see variables, we'll be able to set up watch points and see the call stack. And if you're new to debugging, don't worry about it. You can kind of pick it up as you need it. Um, so let's go first find some code. We'll go to FizzBuzz and we'll put a breakpoint here and maybe one here. Okay, so those are toggles. I'm just clicking in the margin and turning them on and off by just clicking toggle them on and off. And then I will go to the command line and uh, let's clear this. And then uh, I can use that uh, inspect break there with my the name of my file, which is just going to be one fizz buzz. And if it's all set up correctly, when I run this, it and I go back to my file, <clears throat> ah, I uh, I did not enter uh, my argument, and so it disconnected. So let's try that again with. Um, the I.O. is a little different, but we'll add our fizzbuzz and our, our argument there. And then you can see that it stops at the breakpoint. So this yellow line <clears throat> is where it stops. And it gives you access to all of the variables, um, some of which may, may or may not have any meaning. But for instance, uh, if I, oh, and this little tool here, I have a step over, a step into, a step out of, a, re a restart. And then this blue button continue will just run to the next breakpoint. So if I'm sitting here at the four and I hit this run to next breakpoint, it goes to there, to the if. And now that I'm in, now that I'm in this block of the four code, I have this variable i, and I can see the value here is one. I often set up watches where I could, you just type in the variable name and then it makes it really easy to find it. You don't have to dig through a lot of the global stuff. So I can see I'm at one um, and I can even set up, you know, expressions. So I can do my I percent 15 and I can see that the value of that is actually one. Um, which uh, if if i is 1, yes, so I'm starting at 1, and so 1 divided by 15 is 0 with 1 remainder. And so I can just step through, and I can see I will just console log 1, because it's not a, it's not a fizz buzz number. A lot of times when I'm dealing with if statements, I will um, put a breakpoint where I expect the ifs to to, and so I can see that the logic is following what I expect. So now I can either use step over, which takes me to the next line, um, or I'll just, since I have all these breakpoints, I'll just say run to. And you can see now that I am in three, so when i equals three, then the value of the remainder is zero, and then I will console log fizz.
So it's a way to kind of follow the state of your program, the, the values of your data, and also to, to see how it's still. If I use the step command, um, I can kind of see, I can walk one at a time over what commands are going to be issued next. So this is really handy. And so if you spend some time with this, I think it's worth it. Some of your more complicated programs, it will be valuable to be able to step through and, and see the, you know, the, the way that it's iterating and the values of the data. All right, so when I'm done, I'll just let this go. And I can actually turn off my breakpoints and just let it go. And that is just a quick introduction to, the, to using the debugger here in um, Visual Studio Code, the Node debugger. So it's all about setting up that attached to code and then using the inspect break and setting breakpoints. All right.